Dam, Egyptians and Kemet, and Foot, ancient Somalia. All four of Ham's sons and their descendants settled in and around the continent of Africa. This includes the so-called Middle East, which is also part of the continent of Africa. Ham's sons are the people of the African continent, the ancient Egyptians, Ethiopians, Somalias, Canaanites, etc. The Israelites are descendants of Noah's son Shem through Abraham. He is the father of the Hebrew Israelite nation. Abraham is the father of Isaac. Isaac is the father of Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons and these sons are the patriarchs of the Israelite nation. The 12 tribes of Israel are as follows. Reuben, Sibion, Levi, Judah, Dan, Gad, Asher, Naphtali, Zebulun, Ishar, Joseph, Benjamin. The children of Israel were the children of Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons. Jacob's name was changed to Israel because he had an encounter with an angel. Okay? In the land of Canaan, where they lived, there was a famine in the land of Canaan. One of Jacob's son, who was Yosef, which we call today Joseph. Yosef was sold as a slave into Egypt. Being a Hebrew Israelite, he served Yahweh. He trusted Yahweh because that's what he, that's, he was brought up to love and serve Yahweh. He trusted Yahweh. And because while he was in Egypt of his faithfulness to Yahweh, he won favor with Pharaoh and all the people of Egypt. And so when Pharaoh had a dream and could not interpret the dream, they called for Joseph, Yosef. And Yosef came and he interpreted the dream and he made it explicitly clear to the, to the king that we're going to have some years of plenty. We're going to have some years of drought. He said, but you know, the years of plenty, we're going, we, if we take all that we harvest and store it up, we will have enough to take us through the lean years. And the king was so pleased. He said, Yosef, you're going to be in charge of my, of, of all this, um, you know, taking care of all this and see that this is done. And while Yosef was there, his brothers forgot all about him because they sold him. And their father didn't realize that uh, Yosef was still alive because they went home and lied to their father and said, a wild beast killed him. But Yosef, his heart, his mind, everything was serving Yahweh and he won favor and his favor is what caused him to be able to reunite with his father and his brothers. His brothers when they came down to get food Yosef immediately knew it was his brothers but they couldn't recognize him. Why? Because he was now dressed in an Egyptian apparel. He, you know and, I mean, <laughs> they're black, black paper. He recognized his paper. Obadiah Yisrael of the Hebrew Israelites in Chicago points out that if Joseph and the Hebrews look like Donny Osmond, who portrayed Joseph in a stage play, his brothers would have recognized him easily among the black Egyptians. But Joseph's own flesh and blood brothers thought he was an Egyptian. The ancient Egyptians of Joseph's time were indeed what we know today as black. This is a fact attested to by many. When Yosef became governor of Egypt and he, and, and he went to Pharaoh after making acquaintance with his brothers, went to Pharaoh and told Pharaoh, look, my family, my dad, my, my brothers, they, 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 they all... Um, uh, you know, I want to bring them here because they're, they're suffering over there. And, and Pharaoh was just happy to get Yosef's family down into Egypt. And these were Pharaoh's words. Bring them and we will give them the best in Egypt. Hallelujah. And, and so Yosef, Pharaoh sent carts to transport Yosef's father, 
his brothers, his wives, their wives and their children. There were 66 people in all that left Canaan and went to Egypt. Hallelujah. But what happened is while Yosef was there, he was the favorite to all of Egypt and all the nations around. Everybody knew Yosef because he was the man next to the king. And uh, when the brothers came and they all settled there, after Pharaoh died, the new king did not know anything about Joseph. He did not know Joseph. So he did not very, didn't take to Joseph very quickly. And so Joseph had problems with him. He had problems with Joseph. In that, he found that these Hebrew people were multiplying too fast. So he says, you know what? We're going to do this. These people might just overrun us. They might, they might become more than us and then join with our nations next door and they will overrun us. They'll take us over. So he instructed the midwives. He said, every Hebrew woman that is pregnant and sit on the birthing stool, you make sure you look and make sure that that child is not a male. If it's a male child, kill it. But let the female live. And the birthing women couldn't do it because Yahweh's spirit was in them. And they allowed the boys to be born and the girls to be born. And the king got angry. And he got angry and he says, no, they are multiplying faster than we are. So let us enslave them. That's how slavery began. That's where it all began. It began with those children of Israel. And Israel was, was uh, Jacob's name who was changed to Israel. This is a historical depiction of the Jews during the Babylonian period, clearly showing the African racial origins that many believe originated out of Egypt and was followers of the Akhenation religion. This is a statue of the boy king, King Tut. This statue was found in his tomb among many of the treasures in Egypt during an archaeological excavation in 1922. Scholars say King Tut was on the throne of Egypt a few years before the Israelites' exodus. John R. Moore wrote that the white supremacists advocated that Jesus was white. The world has been presented with a white Jesus from the Roman Empire when Augustus was the royal leader around 31 B.C. to A.D. 14. This Eurocentric Christian world knows nothing about the real Jesus from the tribe of Judah, the Ethiopian who spoke Aramaic. According to Hebrews 7.14, the tribe of Judah, from whom whence Jesus, or Yeshua, his Hebrew name, came, is a dark-skinned nation of people. However, as Europe prospered, it presented the global world with a white Jesus, around the time when the Bible was being translated from Hebrew to Greek to Latin to English. Revelation 1.14 clearly states, His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Jesus' head and hair were white like wool is merely referring to his hair texture. The only people on the face of the earth with hair of a woolly texture are known as those of the Negroid race, whose hair is in its natural state is like a wool of a lamb. If black people do not cut or comb their hair, it will eventually lock together and become woolly. The word Jewish, the word Jew was never and never is in the old original scriptures. As a matter of fact, the, um, again, if there is no J in the Hebrew alphabet, how could you get the word Jew or Joseph or Jeremiah or Jehovah? <laughs> it's impossible. It's highly impossible, you see. But um, here, is, here is how this, this the word Jew or Jewish came into being. If we go back and, and you see everything that we say today is scripture based. Everything is in scripture. It, it, it's sad that many of us have not uh, gone into the research to really get the stuff. But it is recorded in scripture and it says if we go back to the book of Genesis, um, let me see if I could, I could 